Hello everybody in Common Sense Asmat. This is Brandon Morris and I'm going to do a quick presentation on phone calculations. For some reason I've got a lot of questions about this as of late so thought I'd break it down in a PowerPoint for everybody to view all at once. So we're going to talk about two different methods. One we're going to use if we're taking a test or if we're actually doing this on the back of a napkin or with a calculator and then we're going to talk about another method that you can do in your head in the field uh, to quickly figure out if you have enough foam to attack a, hydro, or a flammable liquid fire hydrocarbon or polar solvent. So that brings up a good point. What in the world is a polar solvent? I don't hear a lot of people talking about what a polar solvent is, but for us in the field, a polar solvent is something that, that is soluble in water. Does it dissolve in water or does it not? Uh, that's the two ways that we're going to approach this. So if it is soluble in water, like alcohol, then we're going to need an ARAFFF foam. Uh, that is an alcohol-resistant foam. If it's not, then we can use a regular AFFF, uh, but most departments now are carrying ARA AFFF anyways. Um, the difference for you in the field nowadays is going to be the application rate that you use. Even though they are alcohol resistant, they are still broke down by polar solvents. The polar solvents dissolve in the water and attack the bubble in the foam. And as you know, the bubble in the foam is what makes this whole thing work. It's, it's those bubbles that we're adding. It's the aeration that we're adding um, and expanding this foam out. So if it attacks that bubble and breaks it down, then we need to add more of it to counter that. Um, I've broken down uh, in the seven main families that you're going to find out in the field. I'm not going to go through each one, but there's a quick guide there. If you want to have a, a reference to print up, you can just copy and paste that over and that'll tell you uh, what polar solvents are versus the regular hydrocarbons that we're going to go up against. So the by the book method is area times critical application rate times your reduction rate times 15. So area is easy. Area is just your length times your width. I don't care if it's a circle or if it's square or if it's all oblong. Figure out where, how wide it is at its widest, how long it is at its longest. Multiply those two numbers together and you get your area. So if it's 20 foot long by 10 foot wide, that's 20 times 10. It's 200 square feet. There's your area. Your critical application rate is set at 0.1 and 0.2. So 0.1 for hydrocarbons and 0.2 for polar solvents. Again, we're going to have a higher rate for polar solvents. Then your reduction rate is 3% and 6%. It's 3% for regular hydrocarbons, 6% for polar solvents. So that it's a 0 .03, or a 0 0.03 and a 0 0.06. And then 15 minutes is how long you're going to have to do all this. So you need to apply your foam at the critical application rate and your reduction rate for 15 minutes is the way this formula reads out. So let's do this in an example. It's much easier to explain if we actually have an example here. So in this example, I'm estimating that this particular crude oil uh, fire is 800 feet long by 400 feet wide. That's 320,000 square foot worth of surface area that I'm trying to smother out using my foam. If that math scares you, just multiply the 8 times the 4 and add 4 zeros. That's 8 times 4 equals 32. Add 4 zeros makes it 320,000 square feet. Your critical application rate for crude oil is 0.1. Your reduction rate is 3% or 0.03. And then I need to do all of that for 15 minutes. That means I'm going to end up using 14,400 gallons worth of foam concentrate putting this fire out. If I don't have 14,400 gallons worth of foam concentrate, don't even try. You're just going to waste it. It's going to burn off. The, the fuel is going to reignite and you've done nothing with your foam. So just protect your exposures. Wait for the cavalry to arrive with more foam and concentrate on protecting everything around that until you have enough foam to get started. And that's the, that's why we do this. That's why we're doing all of this is to see if we want to attack this flammable liquids fire or not. So if you have 14,400 gallons, go for it. If you don't, just protect your exposures. If you're taking a test or you're going to do this on paper, there's a, there's a way to simplify this by using all the knowns. So if we just multiply all the known factors together, the 15, the 0.1, the 0.03, uh, we can come up with a simplified version of this equation, and that's what you see here on the screen. Uh, for hydrocarbons, it's the area times 0.045. For polar solvents, it's the area times 0.18. Um, so that's the simplified version of the math that we were putting in earlier. Um, so this is the one that you want wrote down on the back of your hand. This is much easier to uh, interpret out in the field. Just a simplified method of the NFPA 11 uh, foam calculation is all this is. But if I want to do this on scene and I want to add a little bit of a safety factor, it's much easier to do this math in your head than it is by multiplying by 0.45 or multiplying by 0.18. Um, in this one, all I've done is turn the multiplication into a division problem after I round it up. Um, so you go area divided by 20 or area divided by 5. That's much, much easier than multiplying by all those different numbers or doing it in the long form. So going back to our original example, we've got an 800 by 400 foot car, uh, crude oil spill here. That's 320,000 square foot. I divide that by 20 since it's a hydrocarbon and I get 16,000 gallons of foam required. Now, yes... This is a little bit bigger number, but that adds a safety factor and ensures that I have enough to put the fire out. This is easy math. It's much easier to divide by 20 or divide by 5 than it is to multiply by 0.18 or 0 0.045. All I've done is round those two numbers up and then use their division equivalent. If you multiply by uh, 0.05, that's the same as dividing by 20. Uh, if you multiply by 0.2, 
that's the same as dividing by 5. So all I've done is turn that into a division problem from the multiplication problem that it was in the first place. So super easy way, it's divide by 5 or divide by 20. Uh, take your area, calculate your length times your width, divide by 5 or 20, and voila, you know how much foam concentrates you need to use. So sorry for talking so fast. That was a lot of information to cover in five minutes. But thanks for joining me, and be safe out there.